In this video, we'll be taking a look at this a l inline fuse holder and installing it on my 71 Chevelle. We'll also see how it solved my overcharging problem. So here's the thing, I installed a new alternator, high output, one wire in the Chevelle and I'm getting this overcharging problem. You can see it's putting out almost 16 volts and I get this warning message and I couldn't figure out why. So then, as I'm researching YouTube to try and find a solution to the overcharging problem, I come across this random video. This guy, it's, uh, he's Russian or something, it's dubbed over in English, he's in this Ford. It's a, he's got a, he's had an overcharging problem forever. Lights are blinking. Uh, his little battery needle is wiggling. I guess he's got it hooked up to an OBDC there. You can see the exact voltage. So this guy, all he does is he changes out one blade fuse and it solves this problem. And there it is right there. There's the old fuse. And now he's ecstatic. It's charging correctly. What's it show? 12, 13, 14 volts, just what it should. Uh, he's got a big smile on his face. Happy as can be. Changed out one fuse. So maybe I thought I could solve two birds with one stone because I needed to change out my fuse. Fuse holder, and I was going to put in a uh, larger capacity using the uh, switch from the blade to the ANL fuse. So let's get started. So let's check out the setup that I have now, which I know is not correct, and that's why we're changing it out. With all the electrical accessories, you know, the cars have these days, like fuel injection and electric fans and whatnot, it all doesn't fit on the battery post. So I've got this wire coming off, and it goes through this blade fuse, which is what I'm going to replace with the uh, inline a &L fuse. And the biggest fuse I could find was 40 amps, and I know it's not enough you can see how it's melted a little bit around here and that's you know indicative of the overcharging uh, problem I was having but also I probably shouldn't be pushing 40 amps through that probably more but it goes underneath this radiator support and then I've got it going to this I guess you call it junction box here but I mean I call it like a, a bus bar but this is a hot battery bus bar 
And uh, that goes into the cab. That's fuel injection. That is my start switch. That's for the fans. And then this comes from the battery. And we're going to upgrade that wiring to a 4 gauge. So you can see how each one of those is, you know, keeps it nice and neat. Okay, let's get started with the install. So let's take a look at this fuse that I replaced. And once again, there was too much going through this fuse. Everything in the cab, like the radio and the lights, went through this. Uh, headlights, bright lights, dash lights, um, power for the fuel injection, power for my fans on my radiator went through this, and it wasn't enough, but it was good enough at the time. But you can see how it's melted, and uh, I don't think that was an overcharging issue. But here's what we did. So I upgraded this wire. This is a four gauge wire now to that battery bus goes underneath this uh, radiator cover here. And then goes to the new inline 
ANL fuse right here, which is a 150 amp fuse, which is probably overkill. And then that connects directly to the battery. And then the line, the red line to the right goes to the alternator. And the other one was the starter. So let's see if this fixed my overcharging problem. All right, let's take a look at these stupid fuses here. And I don't know if it's just because I was trying to put too many amps through it, uh, or if it's the manufacturer, or it's just the type of fuse I was using, I don't know. But this definitely was looks like the cause of my overcharging problem. So I don't know if I should throw away the whole pack. I'm sure I bought these in line at the uh, auto parts store on a whim. But uh, it was one of these 40 amp fuses, so I don't know if the rest of them are bad or what, but it's kind of weird. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you use these products and what you think of them. And if you feel I missed anything or I could have done something better. I do read all the comments. Links to these two products are in the description below. And thanks for watching.